Now, when you first look at a scientific article, it may seem like a daunting task to try to make uh, any sense of what's going on with its small font and simple two-column format. I'm going to try to break down what a scientific article contains so you can get appreciation for the power that is uh, present in a very, typically a very small uh, amount of space here. So first off, uh, I'll start with the title. This helps determine if an article is of interest to you. Typically provides a reasonable, complete description of the study that was conducted. And in the title should be included the species that were studied, or the kinds of experiments performed, and at times a brief indication of the results. Uh, so just reading that title is a good first step, but don't just completely be dissuaded by that. You may want to go on to another very important part of a scientific article, and that's the abstract. This is a very succinct summary, very straight to the point. You see an example of one right here. An abstract contains brief statements of the purpose, the method, the results, and the conclusions of the study. Abstracts are usually free and often included in article databases. So typically get the title and an abstract, and getting much beyond that is where you typically have to pay. Kind of like the teaser, gives you just kind of the brief overview of what's going on, uh, but something that really is very um, pointed at summarizing the article to tell you if you do want to explore it any further. From there, you would go on to the introduction. This contains background information of the author's hypothesis. An introduction also usually describes a theoretical background, indicates why the work is important, states a specific research question, and poses a specific hypothesis to be tested. And they usually don't start with once upon a time, but it's kind of getting into that introduction, that background information uh, of the author's hypothesis, kind of making these connections here to what the main point of this article is about. Now this leads to the methods, and this describes exactly how the authors perform the experiment in a way um, so that it can be recreated. The good thing about this is kind of like ingredients um, is included as part of like a recipe to make something. Is it repeatable? It describes exactly the process you should go through, and every time you follow that, you should get the same end result. The methods describe the experimental design, it's often skipped, so a lot of uh, people say you don't have to really read the method, the method section. But it's very important to read the method section, as this can tell you if there are inaccuracies with the procedure, which can dramatically impact the validity of the findings. So whether or not you trust the end result is going to depend or hinge a lot on the actual methods that those scientists chose to use. And if you follow the methods and they don't make a lot of sense, well then you can't really hold a lot of weight with their uh, end results. The results section will be following this, and this contains the data collected during the experimentation process. Much of the important information included in this section is in tables, graphs um, are often included here. A lot of people just look at the tables and graphs, but you also want to read some of the background and especially the captions. The reader will, uh, can analyze the raw data and draw their own conclusion, which is why reading the previous method section is so important. If you just look at the results but have no idea how they went about collecting those results, can really impact whether your degree of trust or comfort with accepting those results. There's, then there's a discussion phase um, section, I should say. This explains the author's inter interpret of the data and how it connects to their work. Authors often use discussions to describe what their work suggests and how it relates to other studies. It's kind of that conversation that's occurring. Uh, again, while it is a written text, you kind of have a net conversation about what the results show and how it may connect to other things. And lastly, we have the literature cited, and that's all the sources throughout that are cited throughout the paper. It's a good idea to look over the section to see what sources were used and how the dates compare to the published date. Or is there a large gap between them? Or are many relatively close? What type of topic is it? Um, all things worth consideration. This section is also helpful for generating a list of background reading on the topic um, that's under study. It can give you a lot of kind of one book may lead to another, may lead to another article. Uh, to really assimilate kind of this massive information so you're able to understand the bigger picture rather than just the single topic. So hopefully this kind of clarified a scientific article, uh, breaks it down a little bit more and makes it less intimidating so you can try to research one, find one that's of interest to you, and be able to understand it and appreciate the work that went into its creation.